Good evening and welcome back to Underrail. Hope everyone is doing well today. So, like I said, I went over and did a couple of things. Uh, I believe this... Yeah, so we started here. We started here, went through the tunnels, came out here, went down there, entered there, and there was a square around here, right, where we couldn't jump to the next location. Uh, got like an oddity or two. It was stuff we already had, nothing new, but it did help push us even closer. Uh, I'm not sure how we're at 60 out of 62 with it being lit like this. Uh, I don't feel like spending time to count all of those, but I guess that might be the deal. I uh, did a few other minor things, just like quick stock ups, but uh, I did not progress here. So we need to go and uh, see about uh, what all happened with that little tunnel deal. <clears throat> but hope everybody's doing well, like I said. I think I said. Probably said. And I've come to realize something. I was saying that I would. It kind of sounded like I was having burnout or something with this game, right? Thing is, now that the. Uh, did I not open this before? With the natives no longer being a threat, uh. And with Crimson uh, Meadows done. Ooh, look at all that. I'm actually a bit more eager to play. I think it was just we were at a, a slower part, and now that I know the, the busy work's done, I'm back into it, I guess. So, you know, good news. The chief is silently staring into the long, dark tunnel. Pirates? Yes. They had been waiting in the evacuation tunnel when the sec trooper team opened the gate waiting for someone to let them in from the other side. That comm device you gave to Marcus. We found the same one on one of the pirates. It appears that your actions have prevented a disaster, Bacon. If you hadn't discovered the collaborator, these pirates would have likely caught us off guard. Why do you think they went through all this trouble to attack us like this? There's only one explanation. They wanted Professor Oldfield. A sneak attack, even if successful, wouldn't allow them to neutralize too many sec troopers to really affect the number in their the numbers in their favor. They opted for a precision strike in which they either wanted to assassinate the professor, or what would be more likely scenario, to kidnap him. We avoided all of that, thankfully. He hands you a key to a jet ski. You earned it. Unfortunately, there's no follow-up, but yeah. And it does get you two points. I'm not going to take the Molotov, but... I will gladly take the healing items. Now, this is one of the named NPCs, so... uh I don't know if this is mutually exclusive with certain things. Now, allow me to explain for those that haven't played this part of the game. If you didn't do what I did, and it's perfectly fine because this is the first time I've ever bothered to do it, uh, the professor does in fact get kidnapped. And also, that was from talking with him. Uh, he gets kidnapped, and after a few scenarios, uh, <clears throat> you end up needing to go and rescue him from the pirates, or you can join the pirates. Uh, one notable thing, though, and I remember this because it was around the time when I started, a patch came out where if you'd gone around and killed all the pirates beforehand, he might not have been kidnapped at all, and this is a this is an alternative now, because I didn't join and betray, or otherwise go and invade the pirates, I don't know if it is possible to wrap things up here, join the pirates, and then do the pirate quests. I don't think that's an option, but we'll find out later. 
Ah, Bacon, come on in, come on in. I have to say, if it weren't for your keen senses and swift action, that pirate attack could have ended in a disaster. You saved my life, and for that, you have my eternal gratitude. Now, what can I do for you? I have a report to make about Crimson Meadow, a massive horticulture center. You managed to convey the brooding atmosphere of the horticulture center so perfectly that the professor remains speechless for a good half minute after you finish speaking. He speaks after this pause. By the caverns, that is unbelievable, Bacon. The vegetation, the insects, the pesticide. Amazing. Truly amazing. But one of the most important things is that you managed to find that dispatch console. They seem to be the key to discovering the locations of Lemurian facilities. Excellent work, Bacon. See Mark is about your well-earned bonus. I'll contact you as soon as I have a new task for you. Any new discoveries? Right now, we have a very good idea about how the Lemurians lived. I think we've been through this. Yeah, we did. And uh, I am going to investigate the tunnel in, in just a minute. I want to do verify some stuff. Also, Deepwater Sea Globe. We couldn't get to this because Seeger was blocking the way. Oh, actually, you know what? We don't have to go outside. We can just do it right here. So first, I want to save. So, we're level 27. We will no longer get ability score upgrades. The last one was that feat. And we don't get a feat this level anyway. So we're capping out melee, as one would do. Uh, and then once again, we want an effective 96. I will test that out in a minute. Now, again, we don't need anything down here. Throwing is eh. And with the stealth field generator, we're actually kind of okay on stealth. But we'll, we'll see. I do want to pump biology. Or... Let's pump chemistry enough that I can make use of those gas grenades. Which, actually, I think I just need 20. And then start pumping into biology. And we'll try to round these two up over the next few next few the next three levels and then specialization eh, we'll just keep putting into this for now this is by no means going to be the best build but uh we'll we'll make it work now the reason uh we're not picked with the 96 isn't for them but it was enough and we want the egg Ooh. Does that just turn you hostile? Or two out of the... Oh, it does. Okay, so we might need to check with another NPC. There will be variable quantities. So, pump melee. So we want 96 for a specific uh, NPC later. Okay. So, let's check with this sec trooper. They may not all have the same exact value. Okay. What if... Sandwich? Sandwich. What does this kick us up to effectively? A hundred. Could go for a bit more, but... As long as it isn't red, we're fine. And it's just fine. And that puts us up to 3 out of 62. And since we're already here anyway, might as well make good on this, right? Ooh. Was everything that close to... I can steal your helmet while it's equipped, really, my guy? Uh, it's probably because he was right there, but anyway, now that we've... Uh, ascertained the information that we needed. So, after a brief walk, due to that, that whole deal there, this doesn't get flooded. Under normal circumstances, if the pirates do come, this area is just gone. Uh, there is a future bit that you could walk into and you would find the other side, if I recall. 
but as far as that location there, you would not have a clear line. Which I'm sure it would work out for this, but yeah, so we we get some easy access to some things. Like this Limco Cargo Manifest, this transport was carrying a whole bunch of servant parts worth one point. And painting, a nice though amateurish oil on a canvas painting worth two. Take the medicine. Whole bunch of components, which eh, I don't care about. The quality's acceptable, but we've seen better by now. I believe this is the. Uh, <clears throat> I believe this is the last screen you could have entered from on this side had they. Uh, caused the explosion which flooded the tunnels. Could be wrong, though. Utility key card, don't mind if I did. Use the arm to open the door. Now, if we take this ladder up. And uh, look at this. We're in, a, we're in a strange location, like right in the middle of Port Crag. So as you can see, this is the path the pirates took to get into the tunnel. And they had a real easy way of getting in. And as far as we're concerned, uh, it's also an easy way into their place, should we choose to take it. Okay. Gladly take those. What's the quality on that? That's good enough. Garbled stuff, archive, vestibule, welcome, pea bridges. So, auto turret security system, enable, enable, detecting turrets. Auto turret activation procedure completed. Error. Reboot in one. Okay, they are allied now. Contact security advisor, no active security. Oh, missed the desk, which didn't matter. So. Funny that we have allied turrets here. It'd be a shame if there was some reason that that was somehow dangerous or something, right? Hmm. So. No. Of 
short circuit this one. And before I do anything, Psycho Temporal. Do uh, the Snort. And we still have the benefit of the extra dexterity, so we should see some benefit from that. Expose weakness. And we're going to go ahead and enable our shield. That won't matter here, I don't believe. Hmm. Could I put you down in one turn? That would be 12 plus 4. That would be two more hits. I don't think that would be enough. But... Ooh! 25, just saying. With that. So the Naga Protectors are easily among the worst things you can deal with here. Uh, hmm. So he's stunned for another two turns. Can I do... I can do a little damage. What about the knife? Yeah, this will be problematic. Hmm. Two turn cooldown. So literally the second he comes back online. Stealth and exit? No. Okay, there's no point in trying. So we just need to wait things out, unfortunately. There's not much we can do about that. Uh, until Exposed Weakness comes back off, uh, we're basically in the water, so to speak. Yes, I could step back and use the torch, but it wouldn't do very much. And I run the risk of missing and possibly angering my allies. What I need to do is maintain its aggro while staying at a relatively safe distance. Oh, it's actually going after them. I'm a little surprised. So, because we haven't really had the chance to see the Naga Protector in action, that should tell you exactly how dangerous they are literally double taps these dudes with that on a given turn like like it's nothing so pop that can i snort i cannot
Hmm. What way to do that? Okay. E. So if there is a single enemy type in the DLC that could be considered extraordinarily unpleasant to deal with, that's it. And they come with the holographic fire projector. When connected to a power source, projects an animated ball of blue flame worth two oddity points. And a lot of scrap. And we got another one from this one. So that was four oddity points. So already our little trip was justified. Hmm. I'm just... I'm just curious. Really? It doesn't turn all of them hostile? And what do I... It's super worth it, though. We, um, might turn on our security system allies momentarily. Oh, right, and because we walked up to it, uh, it caused the security system, so... Security... Verifying clearance, warning, yes, and... I would go through it properly, but you can't read it. It's scrambled, so... A statue holding a broken spear with messy, corroded wires dangling out of its shaft. Hmm. A statue holding a beautifully sculpted spear on closer inspection. You discover the spear might just be removable. Not for our scrawny arms. That's why we do drugs. And then uh, pull the spear out. And that is the Lemurian spear, which might be the best spear in the game if you're uh, doing that. In addition to being equipped with an energy edge emitter, uh, the head of this strange spear can also open to reveal a miniature plasma cannon. If that ain't uh, pretty neat, I don't know what is. Uh, so we wouldn't be able to use it due to the minimal strength requirement. We only hit that when we have the power glove equipped, so if we switch, we wouldn't be able to benefit from it properly. Hmm, so I don't use spear builds. Uh, I don't know how this stacks up, but I would say, given it comes with a built-in energy system and very nice capacity, as well as uh, a ranged plasma cannon option, I would say it's probably pretty far up there. I wouldn't mind trying it out, but, you know, spear build. Also, the Death's Grin was on Cruiser. Uh, a menacing cloth bandana depicting a set of human teeth. The cloth from which the teeth are weaved appears to be fluorescent. Uh, if you were doing a uh, intimidation-based build, that's probably best in slot for head. Co uh, cone snail pin. And main the shape of a, oh we already had one worth one Some batteries naga protector diagnostic and configuration tool uh, so we repaired the one on the on the camp's beach via skill checks this lets you skip those so plasma beams psychosomatic predation you know what they're worth a fair amount so we'll take the expensive ones spying endoscope of bullets and JHP bullets. Another painting, so that's another two oddity points. Air trap. Shock bullets. Energy pistol and frag grenade case. Super strongman toy. Worth another one oddity point. Oh, we don't need that. More blueprints. Hyper Cerebrics as a plan, so might as well take that. And another advanced electrical repair kit. 
So you do have all the hypercerebrics you need if you can handle both uh, Ingvar and have one prepped for the fishermen for reasons we'll cover eventually. But if you ever need more, or if you're playing an int-based build, which would be a uh, energy weapon build, uh, that blueprint will do the job. Okay. Uh, don't mind me, I'm just going to... Uh... Get some nice batteries. Oh, also plasma discharge. You know what? There, there's literally no reason to not do this, because uh, we're not coming back here. Spoilers. Sorry. And it's not a range thing. Y'all just, yeah, y'all just don't care if I don't attack you. Okay. Ooh. Wait, what's what's the enemy? Okay. Watch me trigger the other two Naga somehow. I mean, there is there is no reason to not do this. Okay. Ooh, that's a nice one, too. Do a quick recharge. Speaking of, shield is actually okay. Can I enable the other two? Doesn't seem like it. The only reason we would do that is, well, he want the want those good little oddities early. Once again, abuse powder to meet strength checks. Gladly take that. So I'm not sure about the pirates yet, if I'm being entirely honest. On the one hand, we could go ahead and hit their camp and just clear them out, and we would get oddities, but on the other hand, if there is a chance, no matter how slim, that I could double dip, I kind of want to wait it out and see probably can't for the record but that would be neat oh actually can you do any oh, screen is completely glitched out yeah we uh we just leveled we're already uh almost a fourth of the way through the next level ain't it great Now that said, we won't have too many uh, immediate payouts like that. Uh, the more oddities you have, the less there are to find, after all. But what can I steal from you? Yeah, you you can't steal the good stuff from them. They're they're too wary. Oh well. Eager. I'm not going down there again, exit. I uh, somehow got over the dead bodies, but angry pirates? He takes a nervous sip. Exum. What's next, the natives? No thanks. I'll stay here. Now, what have you got for me? Could you look at this for me? Okay, I'll work on it straight away. Done. Got something interesting for you. It's on the PC. 
I'd like to know what XR is. Nope. Okay. University of Dees. Okay, so we've already done Asman Jarl. Oh wait, nope. Oh, okay. So we need as we need to read Jarl Asmund and Benedict Osborne. We have Phil Bridges and George Palmer. Uh, genetically engineered animals. Article for the Lemurian Intelligencer. The last month's edition featured a wonderful article on the cultivation and genetic engineering of plants, Crimson Meadows by Benedict Osborne. This article prompted me to write my own as a follow-up, missing the basic philosophy of ecological development that NFT, and by extension us, Lemurians, have undertaken. The difference is that I will be focusing primarily on the animal kingdom. Natural environment is a term missing, denotes an environment that encompasses all living and non-living things that occur and interact naturally, missing, without intervention from outside forces, like human beings. Lemuria used to be a fully natural environment before our arrival, with living inhabitants which were, while far more diverse than our foreparents had anticipated, still much less numerous and less varied, missing the world from which they came. Fish and fungi were abundant, and arthropods and smaller mammals missing, but large terrestrial animals and plants in general, on which Osborne elaborated, were, barring a few exceptions, a thing of the past. It was a healthy ecosystem, no question, but it was clear then and clearer now that there was room for improvement. For it is our duty, missing, <clears throat> Develop the environments which we inhabit to populate them with life, missing not only human. Missing also our duty to cease our intervention as soon as we've aided nature sufficiently, because a healthy ecosystem must be self-sustaining. If you say so, my dude. Missing, we, the Lemurian Ar Agricultural Committee, missing, a long-term plan for the rejuvenation of the animal kingdom of Lemuria, basic premise missing through means of genetic engineering that's a big mistake a fixed number of selected species which would be released into the wild and continue evolving through natural mechanisms as opposed to hitherto artificial ones these base animal families would then further evolve and branch out into other species missing the fundamental idea was to introduce the environment uh, into the environment all elements deemed necessary the plan also included an important clause, reduction of reproductive cycles in all engineered species of animals as much as possible while also engineering their DNA in a way as to boost mutation rates in a controlled manner and within certain limits, for great care must be taken when missing speed up the whole process greatly. I will now elaborate further on both of these important points. The reproductive cycle is, essentially, what determines the speed at which evolution occurs, since only through conception, through merging of gametes, reproductive cells, and therefore their chromosomes, do we get an actual new organism with a different set of traits. But that alone is insufficient. We already have species with incredibly short reproductive cycles, like small insects, and they do not differentiate very fast. Missing environmental factors are also important, but that means we've missing natural selection. There is an important step before we can reach any of that. Mutation rate. Mutation is the primary driving force behind evolution. Natural or artificial selection do not create new species. They merely select them, determine whether their organisms survive and reproduce. Mutation is what causes changes in the cell's DNA, and these changes could, if not uh, del deleterious, result in a healthy creature missing different traits. Haha, <laughs> that's actually a sentence. Good job. Mutations can arise in many different ways, from radiation or chemical damage, erroneous DNA repair, missing, but these somatic or acquired mutations do not necessarily become hereditary mutations, also called germline mutations, and can be deleterious to living creatures, giving rise to diseases such as cancer or missing. Mutation rates differ between species as well as between different regions of the genome. Therefore, missing task missing our genetic engineers is to modify the base family's DNA as to fine-tune the mutation rates missing, controlled hypermutation missing, specific segments of the genome missing to increase the probability for mutations which are more likely to benefit the creature missing, increasing their heritability. Uh, missing and decreasing the probability of deleterious mutations to occur. Uh, 
This is important, missing, faster reproduction of animals more susceptible to mutations, missing, work exponentially to their benefit. Naturally, selection will take over from that point, missing, life will expand and diversify faster than it would ever would, missing, planned stabilization of mutation rates after, missing, number of generations. Several enclosures have been constructed so far, missing, contain the animals and monitor their progress, missing, one of which is the Animal Enclosure 3 near Crimson Meadow, Meadow Horticulture Center, missing office. I am sitting right now and writing this soon-to-be article, missing. Through my window, I see a herd of blubberous bovinoids grazing on juicy red grass. Soon these majestic creatures will become the first of our artificially evolved animals to be released, missing. In 10 years, once the vegetation spreads further and more species become introduced into the wilderness, this cavern will be teeming with life richer than ever. So that would be the bison at the barely, at the bare minimal. And that's the end of that one. So let's go to the one he mentioned, Benedict Osborne. Crimson Meadow, article for the Lemurian Intelligencer. The world which we came from the world whence we came used to be green, not because of toxic chemicals or olive oil stone architecture, but because of plants. Missing, freely and wildly, and they covered the surface of the old world. The plants got everything they needed from a luminous celestial missing called the sun. Some of them stayed close to the ground, some twined up taller plants clinging to them for dear life, whereas those tall and firm ones rose missing. Sometimes live for centuries, these ones, trees, we don't see anymore, missing. Their size or shape, all of them needed the sun. The sun still exists, but its light no longer reaches us because of that. No plants grow underground, but missing species of fungi, missing, not need the sun to grow. We will not be talking about fungi in this article, but only plants. Missing cannot make our own sun, per se. We can, however, substitute it. One needs only light. There are differences in what kind of light it is, of course. For instance, strong UV light causes the plants to create antioxidants in order to protect themselves from photo damage, and these antioxidants increase their nutritional value. Colored light, say red, performs far worse than blue light at maximizing photosynthesis because the ways we perceive as being red lie on the lower frequency spectrum of visible light and therefore carry less energy. Let us start with simple white light. Uh, which contains missing is simple to produce anyway missing uv light uh, we have the hydro hydrothermal vents to drive our generators and create power and we can use that power to create lights we have the sun now but what about the plants there are many kinds of plants some ki some plants are called streptophyta and these are the land plants the most common missing also things like chlorophyta and these are green algae missing. Uh, there are others. Some have seeds which carry plants, embryos, and food, but some don't, and instead have mobile gametes that can fuse together far away from the parental plants, whereas others have spores which do not fuse at all to create new plants. To grow plants in Lemuria, we brought plenty of seeds, gametes, and spores of many different species, all sealed to last for centuries. We have our sun and our plants, what else do we need? Some need ground for minerals. We have that. Oxygen as well. Plants and water. Plants need water. And those that did not live near water needed rain. Water falling from above. Missing. Large masses of condensed water vapor floating high above. Uh, we will make our rain if that is what we missing. Have everything now and plants are growing. You see a problem? No? In the old era, living creatures, or at least the majority of them, did not need our care to survive. In fact, plants are older than humans, as are many other living, missing, existed before us. We, as the Murians, as New Frontier Technology, we mustn't forget that our mission, missing, life possible where it shouldn't be, missing, environment, thrive alongside us. We can grow plants in our closed gardens and our hydroponic chambers, but that is not environment. Environment is outdoors, as the old saying, missing. Missing team and I were responsible for creating plants that could flourish in the dim caverns. They do not need our sun and our rain, or us at all. First, we looked at their color. Not all missing were green, but most of them were, at least when it came to the parts of a plant in which photosynthesis occurred. 
Why? Missing because the sun provided too much energy, the plants absorbed all... Hmm, pardon me. So plants that absorb it all, missing, get burned. That is why no plants are black. Which would be their color if they had the ability to absorb all missing wavelengths. So the plants are green because they absorb blue and red light, reflecting what is left of the visible light spectrum, green. Chlorophyll is, an, is the actual pigment which allows photosynthesis in these kinds of plants, and it is proven to be the most successful solution in missing, but not here. Here we need that missing piece of the light spectrum. We tried creating these black plants at first, but they had a problem even in limited light. Missing, fine normally, but shining even moderately bright light on them would cause them missing death. This is not a permanent solution. Purple plants absorb too little light because they had normally lived in areas that offered them too much of it. Then we took a look at some of the non-green plants and why missing. The algae that lived deep in massive bodies of water, missing oceans, missing, were red because red light didn't penetrate far enough through the water. So the algae absorbed everything but red light, which essentially means it got reflected back. Missing, genetically modified through numerous iterations, many species of existing plants to have red pigment. This proved to be the thing we were looking for, the perfect balance of color for our world. Two species of water reeds and three of grasses were among our first successes. The water reeds first spread beyond the range of our light towers and took on a life of their own. Then the grasses missing. Uh, we are constantly adapting new species to dimness, giving them the green that they had been giving to us. But soon, they will be able to adapt on their own. One day, we might missing trees. This is not the end of our work. New challenges await us, and there is so much to be done. But the most important thing is that we have managed to at least create a crimson meadow in this gloomy underworld. Not our meadow, no. For we want it to exist, even if we cease to. Well, you did a damn good job of that. And that's what we got from there. All right. You know, I think it's time. They seem to be having another discussion and are unaware of your presence. Uh, so. Yes. Hmm, nothing. He nods again. He scratches his head. Man, my hair is growing real fast. Hmm. He passes his hand over his. Uh, there are some big holes in the tent. He looks around, and his eyes fall upon you. Bacon. Aw, are y'all actually out of dialogue? That's a shame. What do you need? I'm here to collect my paycheck. Okay, Bacon, let me see. Yes, here you go. Wait, you should have gotten more coins. Marcus, you swiping zoner. Ah, ignore him. Okay, nothing else? Okay. Anything of note? Technically, the batteries, but we're good. Platinum. We got ourselves one big ass hardcore dominating Naga trooper patrolling the beaches. Imagine that thing in the arena. Yeah. Okay. We done everything we could do. I think so. Kind of hoping for a. Uh, a nice discussion to lean in and listen on, but I guess it wasn't to be. Mm. Nah. Okay. Alright, well, I guess things were a bit cleaner than expected. Might as well check in on Chief Briggs. Anything new? Not that you would have anything to say. Alrighty, then. Can I pickpocket the chef? The chef? 
Jeff now? Yes, but not successfully. Not where it would matter. So, we now own one of these. Now, here's the thing. Uh, this, this whole deal with stability and maneuverability. On the one hand, we could tweak around and, you know, see, see what we could do. But I feel like we're perfectly fine the way we are with this. But then I notice the stability maneuverability deal. And I feel like maybe we could make this thing better. At least for... Oh, hey. Actually, what's, what's our melee bonus? That explains a lot. So I feel like this might be a good idea for land combat outings. And that would, you know, our Devastator would be the option for, well, everything else. Speaking of, I'm gonna just do that and this and, uh,. Okay. Hehe. <laughs> Guess that won't work. So what we will want to do is get a full blue set like ours for our Aegis Patroller. And we will set that up off stream because that would require me to cycle a bunch of other parts around for trading stuff at Ray's. But that's something I think I will consider doing. Because if it makes melee even marginally approachable, uh, that would be a big game changer. Because we did still have... We did still have plenty to explore on this side, which I know leads to some oddities. So that'll be good to do. So... Uh, I was kind of counting on doing a little bit, but uh, we're kind of getting up there anyway. And we did take care of that entire tunnel and additional bits. So I think what I'll do is I'll call it here and then we'll make our way towards K7 for the Nexus of Technology. And we'll pick up outside of it or on the way to it so that uh, we cut down on, like, wasted time next part. Now, if anything should happen that's interesting, I will, of course, stop prior to that and pick up there. But uh, I feel like that would be best. Plus, this gives me a chance to uh, work on that whole jet deal. So anyway, as always, uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I do think we're going to make some steadier progress now. Uh, what with, you know, actually doing things, because uh, it actually, the, the desire to play has come back. But, uh, as always, again, thanks. Uh, Y'all take care of yourselves, take it easy, and I will see you next time on Underrail.